All right. Well, thanks, Francis, and thanks, Mike. We appreciate the opportunity to uh, to talk to you about the power of uh, of access to audio and video and enhancing the security of business operations and expanding your solutions offering. We're not here to just talk about a regular 70 volt type paging system or background music system or things like that. We're going to talk about that plus more and the power that uh, that access IP audio has to offer. So let's get started. So these are some of today's uh, today's uh, talking points that we're going to be going over. And really, at, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is when you have an, an, an audio opportunity, just think about access. Give us a call. We're more than happy to, uh, to help you with your solutions, whether it's an audio solution to complement security or business operations. So let's give a quick access overview. Um, for access is basically working towards a smarter and safer world. You know, we have our core offering, which is the uh, benefits that our quote unquote products offer. And then the extended offering really adds more value and offers more service and support to support the core products. Let's take a quick look at network audio. As far as the market size go, a lot of you may be looking out there saying, well, is it really worth it for me to uh, get involved with audio? You figure the total pro audio speaker market was about 2.1 billion in, in uh, 2018. And you take out um, live events and performance and entertainment and conference and collaboration that leaves you security background music public address which is about a third of the pie so we figure the the market for access audio the addressable market is somewhere around 700 million so there's plenty of room to grow into this business so what is network audio simply put it takes a, a digital or analog input transmitted via category cable and transmits it digitally to the speaker yeah, hey, uh, Chris, can I jump in? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, the um, the slides aren't moving, so they might be moving on the. Um, you might have to go out of presentation mode and just go into the regular mode, and then just scroll down the slides on the left so that they highlight. The slides aren't moving. Correct. Well, that's not that's not good. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, if you go out of presentation mode. And then just click on the slides on the left and go down them. Yeah, yeah, and just go down them from there. Okay, That's so what okay. slide do you see now? Uh, slide eight. Okay, what is a network speaker? Yes. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you want to go back like one or two just to kind of in case people miss them. Well, this is right. strange. Okay. Thanks, Chris. All right, let's go to. Uh, so let, let's let's go back to the uh, the size of the marketplace. So we talked about the market and the pro audio speaker markets about uh, $2.1 billion in 2018. So again, if we take out uh, performance, entertainment, conferencing, and live events, leaves us about a third of the pie there, which is about $700 million. So there's enough room there for you to grow. So we talked about network audio. Basically, it takes an analog or digital signal, throws it over the network via category cable, and uh, out to the speaker. So that's Simply put, that's really what network audio is about. So what is a network speaker? So when you look, think about access speakers, the network uh, speaker is much like a camera, right? And we saw plenty of those. So it's a combination of a speaker and a network device. So the power of the speaker has over its IP address and it's connected directly to the network via PoE switch. Everything's built in the speaker. So there's no preamp, no amplifier, uh, nothing else required for the speaker other than a PoE connection. So here's a typical analog versus, uh, versus a network speaker system. Typically in an analog system, you've got your, typically in an analog system, you've got your speaker, preamp, amplifier. If you've got a streaming device, you've got to have a switch. So all these pieces and parts are connected together with different connector types, right, RCA, BNC, uh, barrier strip, whatever it might, XLR, whatever it might be. With a typical network system, everything is basically all in one. PoE switch to the speaker via category cable, and everything else goes through the switch to the speaker. So it's a very simple uh, connection. So what brings it all together? SIP, Session Initiation Protocol. So SIP allows you to basically communicate with all these different speaker types and inputs, whether it's a microphone, mobile device, uh, VoIP phone, radio over IP with a gateway or a camera or intercom. 
that's what holds it all together. So as we're talking about this, you really can't compare a network audio speaker to a standard uh, traditional analog speaker because it really is a system into itself. All these different uh, uh, inputs basically go over the network into the speaker. So let's take a quick look at the analog and network audio. So typically with an analog system, um, you've got the issues with your cable runs, right? They're normally separate. They're two conductor out to the speaker and they're traditionally they're susceptible to elect electronic magnetic interference, EMI. So you've got to avoid uh, high voltage lines so you don't get any hum in the line like fluorescent fixtures. You also want to uh, be careful because you could get crosstalk along the lines as well as the voltage loss. So you want to make sure that you have the amplifier headroom when you're putting together a long run so you can cover the voltage loss. So network cabling really avoids all these problems. The single network cable goes out to the speaker. And again, the speaker's powered itself via PoE. As you'll see in the image on the bottom there, you've got all these different connector types that also connect your different devices together, whether it's a barrier strip, um, you know, XLR, RCA, whatever it might be. And these are typically uh, points of failure. So with Access, we, we separate our, our audio products into two categories. So safety and security, as well as business operations. Now, each one of these categories use the same products. It's just a question of how the products are, um, are applied in the marketplace. Safety and security applications, it really complements your Access uh, video systems. So it's a live or spoken response to an incident or alarm in a monitored video situation or you can have pre-recorded announcements that are stored actually in the speaker. Um, and applications for this might be perimeter protection, loitering, aggression detection, and more. Now, business operations on the right, again, those are more your traditional public address paging and alerts announcements, as well as background music, you know, that, that provides some ambience for a customer to uh, enhance the customer experience. You can also do in-store messaging, distress notification, queue management, mass communications, and things like that. So, these are the two segments of business that we're focused on. Again, the same products, just different analytics and a different um, application. So let's go over the, um, the line um, real quick. So going from left to right, we have a brand new speaker that we just introduced, which is the C1410 network mini speaker. So what's so unique about this? Well, first off, it's a surface mount speaker. So it mounts to the directly to the surface, uh, whether it's a ceiling or wall. Secondly, it's got 145 degree coverage, which is wide dispersion compared to a typical ceiling speaker. So you might use less speakers per installation. It also has a built-in PIR, which is pretty powerful. So now you run a category cable to this because it's powered via PoE. And if somebody crosses a PIR, you can actually store any number of messages that are stored in the speaker. You can play those messages when somebody um, crosses that PIR or trips that alarm. The next is the Axis C1004E, which is a cabinet speaker, and that's a typical two-way speaker. You would use that if you, don't have a, if you don't have a drop ceiling or don't have access to the ceiling, you put it on the wall, or if you've got an open structure, you could strap that to the, uh, to the structure and have it fire down. Next is the uh, 2005 ceiling speaker. That's a typical ceiling speaker. Agent ceiling speaker goes into the uh, drop ceiling environment and uh, plays the music from there as well. It is for voice and uh, music reproduction. Now, we also have a new and improved, the 1310E. Now, the 1310E replaces the 3003E. So the primary differences between the 1310E and 3003E are, it's got a wider temperature range. So it's from minus 40 degrees to 140. It also has two built-in IOs. So if you wanted to uh, have a panic button play message or maybe trip a strobe, you can do that. And they're built in the back, in the back of the speaker. And you'll see that shortly. Um, again, the C8033 and 8210 are great devices. They, these are migration devices. So let's say you've got a customer who doesn't have the budget for rip and replace, and they've got an existing analog system, but they want to give it network capability. You can use either one of these transition or migration boxes to do that. The C8033 offers the same functionality as our speakers, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, and, and you can play messages and... Um, put your analog system on the network, if you will. And the 
C8210 on the bottom, it's the same thing as the C83 on top, but it has power. It's got 15 watts of power. So if you just have some analog speakers you want to power, you could do that as well. And again, I'll get that into a little more detail on those later on. And then we have a C2N SIP mic, which is a SIP microphone um, with 12 zones, and you can put any one of no, any one or any number of those on the on the network. So here's a little more detail on the C1310E. As you can see, it's a replacement for the 3003. You'll see the improvements there. The mounting bracket also fits into a J-Box. It fits onto a J-Box, sorry. So we changed the configuration of that. The two built-in IOs that you'll see here on the right-hand side, as well as the temperature rating minus 40 to uh, plus 40. It is the same price as the 3003E. And again, it's for all verticals, right? Indoor, outdoor, primarily used in open spaces for uh, voice reproduction. So here's some more detail on the C1410. And again, it's primarily for security and safety solutions. It is indoors only, surface mount, so it reduces the installation cost. It's easy to put up, easy to add on to an existing system or a, um, a new system. Uh, it's got wide coverage, as I mentioned before. It's got the built-in PIR with 90 degree coverage, again, to trigger messages without the need for an external IO. And it's 299 MSRP. So how does audio complement security? Let's take a look at this here. So traditionally, your security systems are passive forensic solutions, and they're great solutions and obviously required. And we all, we all love security solutions. But what if you were to, what if, by simply adding audio, what if you were to change that passive forensic security system into a proactive deterrent solution? So just by playing an audio message, when somebody trips a perimeter or somebody um, is loitering too long or somebody is uh, maybe doing some vandalism to a school with spray paint or whatever it might be, just playing an audio message might deter them from actually carrying out what, um, what activities they're doing. So let's talk about some audio applications for security. So effective physical security plans, they typically include what? Detection, a delay, and a response. And video has been a reactive tool, as we said earlier, without really an effective response. But leveraging audio and video analytics, surveillance can provide a response with the pre-recorded messaging. So the messages are actually stored in the speaker, or you can have a live announcement as well if it's monitored. So here, here's an, an application. We've got a, a, um, an integrator that focuses on car dealerships. And basically what they're doing here is he put uh, a few horns up on the pole with a strobe light. And after hours, you know, a lot of people go in after hours and they want to look at cars because they're working or, or, or doing other things. They look at, look at cars after hours. But if somebody's there, let's say from 10 o'clock at night between you know, five in the morning, the odds are they have a little different intentions. So by simply putting a, a, a horn or two with a strobe light up on a pole, and if, if uh, intruders come in the lot between those hours, it'll play a message, thank you for stopping by, uh, please stop by during business hours. And it gets a pre-recorded message at first. If the person stays there, then they, um, they do have this monitor with the central system. So they basically can call down saying, hey, get out of here. So just by adding a horns, horns and strobes with some recorded messages and live announcements, they were able to deter uh, Ninety-three percent of intruders uh, before law enforcement had to be notified. So think how much money that saves. Whether it's vandalism to the vehicles, whether it's somebody stealing something from a car or or, um, or damaging it, and then having to get law enforcement involved. So ninety-three percent of intruders um, basically left before law enforcement had to get involved. So here's an example of perimeter protection. Um, I'm not sure you're going to be able to hear the message here, but um, what the message basically says is, you know, you've entered a secure area, please depart the way you came, Notify, uh, authorities have been notified. So I'll just play this, uh, play this through.
right? So just by playing that simple audio message when somebody crosses that fence or gets involved with that fence line, again, if somebody's determined to do something, they're gonna do it anyway. But more often than not, what you're gonna see is that person is gonna stop what they're doing and, um, and um, do it someplace else. So here's another example of a department store, basically using audio and, um, and uh, video analytics, again, tied together. So in this area, in this application, the department store was having problems with, um, with um, um, organized crime. So basically, I think it was the cosmetics, the cosmetics area. So what they were doing is they had cameras set up there, but the, um, the shoplifters, the criminals knew ways to get around them and things like that. So what they simply did was they, uh, they have a camera in the area with a speaker and they have a loitering a Q monitor a cap that with a dwell time trigger in the camera. So when somebody was in the area for a minute or two minutes, it did two things. Number one, it sent a message to the area saying, hey, thank you for coming by the cosmetics area. Um, a sales associate will be with you shortly. And what it also did was it sent a message out to the sales associate, letting, letting them know somebody was in the cosmetics area. So I think the key takeaway here is that the total reduction of organized crime was 85% reduction of shrinkage, right? And in addition, it increased the sales and improved custom, the customer experience survey, thanks to faster response time. So again, the point here is that a simple audio message playing in conjunction with a video using analytics that prevents somebody from doing something that they might have uh, might have done or they might regret. So simple um, to summarize some of the the returns on investment for audio and security. It changes it from a proactive. Um, it changes it from a reactive forensic type solution into a proactive deterrent solution, and that adds more value to to your company uh, when talking to your client. Um, again, many incident, incidents can be avoided simply by adding an audio deterrence message. People see cameras all the time. They don't know if they're hooked up. They don't know if they work. They don't know if they're being monitored. But when a message comes out, um, it's a very powerful uh, message letting, letting the person know that, yes, indeed, they are being watched. Again, it increases business due to deterrence. Um, also offers a safer environment. And also, when you think further down the line, how much money really does it save? Um, less damage less loss of goods, fewer man hours are devoted to incidents and police activity, reduce insurance premiums, um, lower first responder calls, less time in the whole judicial system and attorney's fees and things like that. So it saves a lot of time down the, uh, down the road. So again, just to review, 93% um, of the time, detruders uh, were deterred without having to dispatch law enforcement. That's for the car dealership. And again, shrinkage was down 85%. These are pretty powerful numbers, 85% compared to before the solution was installed. So let's talk uh, real quick here about business operations, which is your typical background music, public address paging. So with, with, our, with the same speakers that we talked about for the security applications, you can also use them in paging and in, in announcement applications. So you can make live or schedule announcements in different zones at the right time of the day or night at the right place. And also you can create the ambiance obviously with background music, which is easy and easy to schedule and flexible to schedule um, with, uh, with, with access speakers. Again, we talk about public address and paging. Um, you can do the routine announcements to mass notification or mass communications. And it is an effective public, uh, public address solutions for campus-wide communication. So whether it's one building, multiple zones in one building, or campus-wide and multiple, uh, multiple buildings in a facility. And the network speakers, they do provide a scalable solution that leverage your existing uh, VoIP system or peer-to-peer -peer communications. Because they're on the network, you know, you, if you run a, a category cable out to a speaker, it's easy to add a speaker. Um, with some of the uh, analog systems out there, you have to run your two conductor wire and, and make sure you have the right headroom in your amplifier. Where again, with these, it's as easy as running an, an RJ45 drop to the speaker and uh, you're up and running. 
Here's an example of a retail chain that broadcasted music, music and um, announcements into a store. And this is a pretty straightforward installation. They have access cameras, as you can see there, they put access cabinet speakers in, and they're playing in-store messaging throughout the store, as well as um, um, using the cameras and the video analytics, they're uh, sending messages over the system to avoid, uh, avoid shrinkage, right? Somebody wants to pick something up off the shelf and walk out the door. And it's also good because they're monitoring the inventory level to make sure they have the right amount of product on the shelf so they can sell it. So again, it helped to control the insight for their store, control the environment of their store. And in, in addition to that, using the cabinet speakers, it also reduced the number of speakers that they had to use for this particular application. I think it actually yeah, cut it in half. So here's another sample video um, that we have. I'm not sure again if the audio is gonna play here. Basically um, what, what's, uh, what's happening here is I guess the, the two most um, pilfered products in a grocery store might be, um, might be a baby formula and energy drinks. In this particular instance, one of our partners has a pressure pad underneath the products. And when it senses a, an inordinate amount of pressure coming off that pad, it sends a message. And the message basically says, um, assist, in this case, it says assistance needed in the energy drink aisle. And you'll see what happens. And if you can't hear it, you'll be able to tell when, when the message is played. Yep, or not. Okay, so we have some technical difficulties on the video there. But the video, basically, when they hear the message, you basically see um, they're putting everything, this guy's putting a bunch of stuff um, that down his pants. And then when the message plays, it's funny, you see all the cans rolling all over because uh, he's basically dropping all the product and moving on. So let's go over some of the uh, migration solutions we talked about. Here's an overview of the product line. Now, one thing, to keep in mind when we're talking about network audio and we're talking about a, a speaker being a system versus just a speaker. So each one of the, each one of the speakers that you see here, as well as the migration devices, they had their PoE powered. So a category cable from a PoE switch to the speaker powers them all up. They also have scheduling capabilities. So each speaker comes with what we call access player, which is week long scheduling. So you can actually set your schedules um, in each one of these devices. So if you want messages to play during the opening or during closing, and you want to have certain music play at certain hours, you basically go through the schedule and you can do that. Uh, we'll go into that in a little more detail, but that's available through each and every one of our speakers. We also offer health monitoring. And what that means is each speaker has a microphone built in. So that microphone isn't there for two-way communications today, but that microphone is there basically listening for test tones. So you can schedule the test tones to go through the system. And if the microphone doesn't sense the test tone, it'll basically let the administrator know that there's a speaker not working. So think about that. You know, if you've got 100 speakers or 50 speakers in, in, in a warehouse and a speaker's suddenly not working, you know, you've got to go through and basically with an analog system, you want to go through and listen for each speaker to see if it's working or not. Whereas here, you can basically find out from the dashboard if the speaker's working or not. So here's one of the migration devices we talked about earlier. This is the C8033. So this has all the, the smarts, if you will, or intelligent of our speakers built into this box. So very simply, you can take any analog system and give it network capability. So the speaker, as you can see here, you've got an RJ45 um, connector here. It is PoE or DC powered. Um, you have your audio in here, audio out here as well as two, uh, two closures. So a good application for this product is, let's say you, you've, got a, you've got a customer that wants to do some PSA announcements and they've got an existing analog system and they don't have the budget right now to go for an IP system. So what you can do here is you can easily record the messages in here, schedule the messages to play at various times and have your audio go in and out of this box and control it via IP, right? Control it on the network. So that's all built in this product. And that's the C8033. I've got some simple examples here. Here's uh, where you have a digital input um, out, to, uh, out to analog. Here's an application where you have a um, analog input out to a digital IP speakers. 
And here's another example where you can basically take an analog system and a digital system and combine them together with a digital analog input. So you see that little, that little um, the C8033, it's about the size of a, of a cigarette box, if you will. It's a pretty powerful message, a pretty powerful uh, transition device. So an, another example is the C8210. So the C8210 is basically the same thing, if you will, as the C8033. But the difference is you've got power coming out of this. So now if you have some analog speakers in an area and you want to power them and put them on the network, you would basically use the C8210 for that. Again, it's got the same scheduling, the same health monitoring, IP connectivity, scheduling, um, PoE power, everything built in. But you basically can now power those analog speakers. So let's touch a little bit more on the audio network devices and the software and configuration. So as I said, every speaker we offer offers audio player. This is the scheduling software. So again, think about an analog solution versus an access network solution, right? You may have um, um, some of these capabilities right in the rack, right? Rack them and stack them for an analog system. But in the access system, everything is built in the speaker. So there's no need for that centralized rack. All you need is a PoE switch out to the speakers. So as I said, the audio player, um, this uh, scheduling is built into each speaker. Simple drag and drop scheduling. You can create playlists with any kind of online or offline audio. Add your MP3 or PLS streaming sources. Um, you can control the volume from the mobile app or the manage the system from a leader speaker configuration. When we say leader speaker, that's like a zone configuration where you have one speaker um, let's say you have three areas. You have one speaker with two followers, if you will, and that's a zoned, zoned area. So you can zone your systems very easily using access audio players as well by using the, uh, the software built in the, uh, the speakers. So if you want some more powerful control, let's say you've got multiple billions, multiple sites, and, and you want to have control, um, more control over those systems, you would use, you would use access audio manager. So it does offer central control, audio content management, uh, multiple sources coming in, uh, zone management. You can have any one of uh, hundreds of zones. Uh, priorities, you get up to nine level of priorities using Access Audio Manager. Uh, your scheduling capabilities, the audio player is good for a week at a time, whereas you can schedule Audio Manager out months or years, however long you want to do it. Now, we just recently introduced an e-license based version of this where you can basically take the software and load it on a local computer or it's also available on its own server. So let's go into some quick differences between the two. Um, as you'll see, audio player is good for one zone, audio manager 1000, audio content, SD card and streams. By the way, each one of our speakers also offers SD cards. So if you wanted to store some programming material or if you wanted to store even some, maybe some sound masking, you wanted to put on the SD card and have that loop, you could have a relatively cheap uh, sound sound masking material, sound masking solution. Um, you've got local or NAS streams in the audio manager. Scheduling, like I said, with the audio player, it's basic, which is one week, and will repeat week after week, or audio manager is advanced, so it goes much further into the future. Priority levels for the audio player is basically two, right? So there's your background music and your paging, whereas Access Audio Manager offers up to nine. Input sources, again, audio player is one. Access Audio Manager up to 100, and the speaker count you can see as well, 300 to 15,000. So again, the Access Audio Manager, it's a powerful solution um, for larger, multi, uh, if you've got a campus-wide solution you want to put together, let's say, Audio Manager is good for that. Um, so, so you're probably sitting there saying, this is great, Chris. We've talked about audio. We've done all this stuff. But you know what? I'm a video guy. I put security systems together. I pull cable. And, and, and that's what I do. So audio kind of scares me. So in order to put you guys at ease, what we've done is basically created an audio design service. So, so what does that mean? The audio design service, this is a complimentary service that we offer to you. And it really is the key to designing, proposing, and selling access network audio solutions, right? So our local FSEs, <coughs> excuse me, working in conjunction with you, will basically put the system design together for you so you can confidently go in and present a solution to your client. 
So again, it makes you more important to your client because you're not only doing the security and cabling, you're also offering a complete audio solution. So again, we understand you may not be comfortable doing this, so we want to help minimize your stress and um, design the system for you. And again, what this does is this helps you increase your profitability and revenue per project. It also makes you more important to, the, uh, to your client. So this is the website here, access.com, audio design service, and um, we'll walk through the whole process. So once you go to uh, access.com, audio design service, you'll see this form. You complete your information on the right-hand side, click uh, agree to the terms and condition conditions, hit submit, and we'll send you an email with a link that'll bring you to a, uh, to a site survey form, which we're gonna go over next. So this is the site survey form. And this is really um, pretty, a pretty powerful outline as far as what the system is that you're designing for your client. As you can see up on top is in a new installation, yes or no. So that'll tell us if there's um, existing products we need to interface with or not. Design due date, never good to put in there tomorrow or yesterday, right? So we can turn these things around typically within four or five days, if not sooner. Um, some of the channel partner information, this is your information you input here and also the facility information so we get an idea as far as where it's going. And this is all for tracking purposes. So you see in the next area, facility type, this gives us an idea as far as what type of facility, obviously, that the, um, that the system's going into. Is it a factory? Is it retail? Is it a warehouse? What is it? Um, some of the system functionalities, you know, what are you going to be doing? Playing background music, public address, security. Paging sources, you can see the different paging sources there. If it is a telephone system, we need to know the model and what kind of system it is and how we're going to be communicating with it. Um, if there's background music, let us know what the source is, what kind of source. And also, is it connected to a VMS or a surveillance system? If so, what kind of VMS? And also, if you're doing analytics, what kind of analytics are you going to be doing? What kind of messages do they want to play? And other information, you can put that here. On the bottom, it's pretty simple. Just give us a simple overview, a simple summary of what the system is. You know, um, they've got a, an office building with a, um, you know, an office area, a loading dock, and a, and a, and a maintenance facility in another building. And they want to do paging to each zone, right? Just a quick outline. So that's page one. Page two, this looks pretty complicated, but it's really pretty straightforward. You'll see each one of the zones on top, zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera. And each one of the columns is identical, right? So here, what you do is you name your zone, put in your room size, mounting height for the speakers, ambient noise. Now, ambient noise is critical when putting together an, an audio system. And the reason why is because you want to make sure that whatever paging or announcements you're making um, are louder and, and can be understood, right, over the ambient noise in an area. Give you an, an idea, a quiet office may be somewhere around 60 dB, 60 dB. And if it's a quiet office area, having a simple 10% um, uh, or 6 dB increase over the ambient noise is fine. You'll be able to hear the announcements. However, if you've got an area that's a little noisier, you know, maybe it's a, um, in a public area, a mall or, um, or train station, whatever it might be. In those cases, you're going to want to have the messages somewhere around 12 dB or more above the ambient noise so it can be heard. So ambient noise is critical. And what you can do with the ambient noise, you can measure that a couple of ways. You can measure that either A, by buying a, um, a dB uh, noise meter, right? Or what you can do is you can download a application in your phone called dBx, decibel X. Um, it's not as good as having your own sound meter, but um, it'll get you, it'll get you uh, close enough, let's say. So Decibel X is that, uh, at that application you can, you can download in your phone. Um, as you go down, I'm not going to go through every box here, but as you can go down, you can see you know, background music, public address, volume control, etc. cetera. Um, each column is the same. So I think at the, um, at the end of the day, what you want to remember is you're basically putting this system together for your client. Now, the system we design will be based upon this, this sheet, right? So this is kind of critical that we actually get this completed form. And no design will be, be started until this form is in, completed in-house. So you're sitting there saying, okay, Chris, I got this form. I put all this time in here. I'm doing my first audio system. Now what? What, 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 what do we get for this? So what you'll get is basically an audio design detailed report. So 
This will give you the number of speakers, type of speakers, location of speakers, speaker layout, DB coverage, um, the total number of speakers. Like I said, we'll even lay it out on we'll lay it on your under floor plan if you provide a floor plan for us. So you will get a complete solution. Now, what makes us different from other folks that are doing this is that we use acoustically proven scientific software to put these systems together. So it's not like just going through and pointing and saying speaker here, speaker here, speaker here. We're basically using soft, acoustically proven software and accepted software that actually um, gives you an accurate um, layout as far as what, what your customer can expect from their audio system. Now think about this. So let's say, let's say you've got your access camera system, your, your security system out there and you've used Site Designer for that. So you get a floor plan with your access security system. Now, what you can do is take that floor plan, send that into us, and we'll basically lay an audio um, layout on top of that security floor plan. So now, you, now you're presenting an audio as well as video solution to your client. Oh, by, by the way, we'll do this for each zone as well. So if you've got multiple zones, multiple floors, you will get a report for each zone in the area. So why is that form necessary? First off, as I said, it, it really becomes the reference to go to document. We, we're all familiar with uh, with feature creep and scope, scope creep and all that kind of stuff. That form is what we're designing the system to. So that becomes the reference point. As I said before, it lets your clients see what they're going to hear. So now if you're concerned, geez, am I going to have enough coverage? How loud is it going to be? How's it going to sound? You can basically show them based upon this scientific software that this is how your system is going to perform based upon the input that you've given us. And again, it helps set your client's expectations. There's nothing, nothing better than talking to a client and he asks you, how's it going to sound? Oh, it'll sound good. You know, as good is very subjective, right? This is really an objective way of, of putting a system together. So how does it help your firm? Obviously it increases profits per project. You're, you've already got a team on site pulling cable, doing security. Why not do the same thing for audio? They're already there. It's another, it's another uh, uh, cat drop. It also increases your importance to the client. Like I said, now you're not just the, the video guy coming in and pulling cable and, and having to compete with all the other guys who are offering the same kind of solutions. Now you're coming in offering video, audio, and again, tie it together with analytics. Now you become much more important to the client and more of a consultant versus just a, a vendor, if you will. So by doing this, it increases the client's safety, security, and image. You're basically giving them a more powerful and, um, and um, uh, more secure uh, solution. So just some, qu some simple questions you may want to ask to, 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 to start the conversation. Do you have an existing audio system? You know, if so, hey, how's it using? How's it used? Can you send or play triggered messages in specific areas? Would you be interested in that? You know, what do you like least about your existing audio system? And I'll bet you more often than not, what they're going to say is they don't like it because their employees can come in and they can put their music on any time of day or night that might not, you know, suit the ambiance that you're trying to, trying to portray in your store. Um, maybe, and you ask them, have they thought about incorporating audio into the security system? to increase revenue and customer employee safety. Again, uh, just by playing a simple audio message, how is that gonna deter people from doing something they shouldn't be doing? And are they aware of how analytics enhances your security solution, like queue management, in-store messaging, aggression detection, mass communications? Nine times out of 10, they're not gonna be aware of what analytics can help them improve their business. And that's why you're there, right? You're there to really help them understand how you can help, you can improve their business by <clears throat> putting together access video, access audio with analytics. And then would you be interested in an intelligent network system based audio system that combines them all together? So some of the, the top reasons to install network audio. First off, as we said, it is an all-in-one solution, right? So it's pre-configured, self-testing, POE powered, scheduling built in, health monitoring built in, um, and all configured via the software. Audio for security, we mentioned you can do the messages to deter people from doing um, activities they shouldn't be doing or going someplace they shouldn't be, be going that they might hurt themselves or injure themselves or others. 
and you can do uh, recorded messages or live messages. And again, uh, using an analytic for aggression detection, if you can sense somebody yelling or somebody getting into a fight, you can send a message saying, hey, you know, relax, uh, security is going to be coming soon, it'll break up a fight. And again, changes the system from a reactor forensic and makes them more proactive in deterrence, a deterrent solution. Audio for Business, we touch base on that as far as paging and live or schedule announcements, background music, any kind of marketing messages. Um, that's the different application for Audio for Business. It's flexible and scalable, just like any, <coughs> excuse me, just like any network device. It's, it, it's a network device and our software allows it to be easily modified once it's installed. If you want to add more speakers, just plug it in and configure. You want to add zones, change your, change your zones. Very easy to do via the software. Whereas with an analog system, you basically have to go out and rewire the thing, right? Whereas here, you can change it on the fly. Um, it does also offer seamless integration with VMS, Genetech Milestone, uh, SIP communications, VAPIX, or ACAPS, all sit in the speaker. Um, the analytics, I mean, the analytics are really kind of the glue that holds the audio and video together. That, that's the force, force multiplier, if you will. And that integrates the software platforms. And again, for loading announcements, uh, aggression detection, gunshot detection, uh, mass communications, whatever it might be, analytics are really important to, to, to basically tell the whole story. So a few more reasons are it does integrate with analog systems. So if you've got a customer who doesn't have the budget to rip and replace for an IP system, they can go in and they can very easily um, add network capability to their existing system. And that's, remember, that's using the 8033 and the 8210. Uh, we talked about monitoring. So the uh, microphone is built in the speaker. So you can test the audio output of the speaker. Um, you can turn that off. You can disable that either via the software or hard switch in, this, in each speaker. Because uh, obviously there are some areas where they don't want to, once, once they hear a microphone in the speaker, they want it to be disabled regardless of what it does. So you can actually do that. So it's local or remote control, um, audio player, audio manager. You can uh, remote control or central control. You can set up your zoning, different priority uh, settings, source selections, volume controls, things like that. Network reliability. Um, again, it's category cable, right? POE switch to each speaker. Uh, that, that's the connection. There's no RCAs, there's no, uh, no XLRs, no BNCs, no barrier strips, no other connectors, which are possible um, or, or EMI um, points of interference. So it's a much more reliable system. So is it going to save you money? Yeah, it's going to save you money because basically you're just running category cable out to the area and putting a speaker up. So it's not only an installation where it's going to save you money, but it's also going to be easier to configure the system. And as I said before, it's incremental business as well, right? So it all is net, net new business for you, um, again, to improve your positioning with your client as offering more than, quote unquote, just a security system. So I want to talk a little bit about audio resources we have in some of the experience centers. Um, Access has multiple experience centers throughout the country, um, as well as Canada and Mexico. And each one of these areas is open. So if you uh, wanted to bring a, a customer in or if ADI wanted to bring uh, some of their clients in, uh, you're more than happy to schedule some time in each one of these uh, experience centers. And we'll be glad to run you through a tour and a much more in-depth um, uh, training session on video and audio. <coughs> Excuse me. So we are with you all the way. Access is a great supporter of ADI and ADI is a great uh, partner with Access. Uh, we do work very closely, obviously, with ADI. We have local salespeople that will help you sell and solution engineers to help you design your projects from start to finish. Uh, we do have a USB, US uh, tech support team <coughs> for you and your customers. And we offer multiple solutions, like we said, audio, video, analytics. Put it together. That's the package. That's, that, that's what differentiates, again, Access IP audio from analog audio. <coughs> As we said, we have some nice tools you can use to help you, uh, audio design service, as well as the access product selector. And we have multiple marketing materials available to support you and the team um, in the field. <coughs> These are some additional resources we have to offer. As you can see, if you just go to access.com slash audio, you'll have access to all these brochures and all this information to help you be, uh, be successful uh, selling access video. 
and Nexus Audio Solutions. So on that, I want to introduce um, Joshua to say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, happy Friday. Um, I'm, I'm Josh Gilland. I'm the uh, supervisor for the ADI project registration team. Just wanted to drop a quick uh, blurb about us. Um, kind of jumping off the previous point there about working closely with ADI. Um, my team works with Axis to register large scale projects for discounted pricing. We do that with uh, pretty much every vendor that ADI carries. Um, requirements for doing so generally larger uh, projects, so five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollar projects are usually what we're looking at. Um, qualifications vary from vendor to vendor. Uh, Access, for example, would be ten thousand MSRP for for most registrations to qualify. Um, but my team is dedicated to doing that. That's all we do. Uh, we work with the branches to submit your quotes to the various vendors to get them the best pricing we can. ADI passes along 100% of the discount, so this is purely a service straight to our, uh, to our installers. Um, happy to do that for anybody. The process is pretty simple. You just gotta go to your local branch, call them, send them an email, go in. Obviously, once all this uh, coronavirus has died down, go in. Um, Give them the details of your project, location, city, state, uh, specific end user information, things like that, and the bill of materials you're looking at, and they'll get it over to us. We'll contact the vendors, Access in this case, or whoever it may be, um, see what we can do with the pricing. Once that's back, we'll get back with the branch, and they'll send you the updated quote. That's all you have to do on your end is provide a little bit of information, and we take care of the rest. And I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody may have on that. Thank you.